Hi guys, welcome to part three of a series of videos on refactoring the PMM. Um, it's a bit unfortunate, we didn't really expect to take this long with uh, sorting out the CI. It looked like we were very close to the end, but in reality this is our third episode or the third part and we're still um, very much in the thick of the CI exercise. And I'm not sure if we'll finish it today either. Um, so we'll just recap where we are. Um, I think we've finished all of the known issues with Doja and itself. Um, it's still have a few failures here, but we've done a couple of commits today. Um, yeah, in fact, just the one commit. Um, this was just a mistake uh, that we had when we were trying to tidy up uh, because of the copying and pasting. Clearly, we didn't copy and paste sufficiently. Uh, so I still had a few tests that were not doing the right initialization, so that's fine. That should resolve all the remaining errors here. Uh, the problems we had with Valgrind uh, were also appear to also be fixed with um, the day before changes. Um, so uh, six or so errors. Let's have a look. Yeah, here we go. So these six defects, we seem to have gotten rid of them. Um, and so we're pretty much tonight's nightly should take us where we want to be with everything green, I think. Uh, so that's that. Um, in terms of the project, C++ project, we're also looking quite good. We still have a few Valgrind defects, but again, we've done a push today. Uh, in fact, interestingly enough, I don't know why I can't see that push here. Oh, I know why. It's because um, it's not a Dogen commit. So if I look at this guy here, uh, we'll see the, the remaining commits that we've done today. So there's the ball grind ones. Um, so in theory, I think the C++ reference implementation will also be as green as it gets because we, we had this small number of tests that were failing. Um, never did have enough time to look into this uh, across all our operating systems. It didn't see anything particularly too, too worrying. And since Linux is clean and since the nightlays are clean, um, we just left this in the backlog uh, to deal with, and I think we'll keep that approach for now um, because this will require code generation changes and so on, and um, we don't really want to be dealing with that right now. <clears throat> so that leaves us with the third uh, project to worry about, which is C Sharp. Now, we had, um, we thought this was going to be quite easy um, because uh, .NET Core now makes life very simple. It works very well on Linux. Um, however, um, as you can see here, we haven't actually touched this project for a while. Um, this was using .NET Framework and Mono and so on, um, not .NET Core. So the first question to ask is, how hard would it be to get this thing to build on .NET Core? Um, in order to do that, uh, so if we start clocking, we start at, I don't know, 45 perhaps. So in order to do that, um, uh, we are in C++, so if I just go up to C Sharp. So in order to get this thing to build in .NET Core, uh, we need to change these CS approach files, I believe. Um, and because these are code generated, of course, we're going to have to change the code generator in order for this to work. Um, however, one perhaps simple thing to ask, uh, so we tried a second ago to build this using .NET Core, I believe, uh, not with C++. If I just go back to C sharp. Yeah, here we are. So we tried to build this with .NET Core. <clears throat> and the problem was we seem to be referencing the framework. Um, now, I guess the first question to ask is, can we just reference uh, .NET Core instead of the framework? Um, oh, actually, sorry, I just realized we're doing the common mistake of uh, forgetting to stop Emacs. This is a bit annoying. We uh, always have the wrong monitor up. Right, so what I was trying to say that I didn't show a second ago was um, this is what happens when you try to .NET build. 
um, framework, there's a reference to the .NET framework 4.5, but of course we're running .NET Core. We don't really want to be going backwards to the .NET framework. Um, so let's just try not to do that. Uh, I guess the question to ask is, uh, where do we reference the framework? Because we can't see any references here. That's a good thing. Uh, we do have a solution here. I don't think the solution file references the framework. Excuse me. This ongoing cough doesn't seem to be going away. Uh, so as you can see, we don't seem to have anything there. Uh, there's no other files I can see. They're obviously referencing the framework. Uh, I wonder if um, there's something we could do here to just say use whatever is installed. Uh, we are also using the old legacy file format, but I guess if we can get away with it for now, we will keep it as is. Um, so the number of packages installed here. For now, let's just try to get rid of all these guys. Um, I not finished my coffee. So the idea is that we will uh, we just need to understand who's pulling in the framework, really. All right, still seem to be pulling in the framework. Uh, let's just do a restore. Interesting. So if the projects don't require anything to restore. Right, I don't really um, want to install the framework, as I mentioned, because we don't really want to use legacy stuff, unless um, there really is no alternative. So we'll start by... Um, um, so if I just do a project tile... Uh, no, I buffer project tile, isn't it? Uh, so if I just do a buffer project tile... CPI. And uh, no, I don't want to switch the projects. Okay, and let's just type um, I buffer project tile. Interesting. Oh, I, I, I think the problem is we're not in a project yet, project. Um, not to worry. Um, right, so now we can do I buffer project tile. There we are. <coughs> so this is our C sharp project. Um, Question to be asked here is um, how is it that we're pulling in the framework? So moving from C to C sharp always requires a switching of the context switching really, and it is always difficult. Um, not very obvious really what determines the need for the framework don't seem to have any new new get packages that we're pulling in um, ah yes I think because we are using the old style formats we're not picking up the NuGet dependencies I think let's just um, Let's just do a C -sharp .net example. Let's just look at a very simple example project and GitHub perhaps. Um, <clears throat> anything really would do. Doesn't really matter. So for example, pattern matching. Okay, there's a C -sharp project. So as you can see here, um, the new style projects are very, very simple. Um, compared to the, all of the stuff we got here. The interesting thing is that we don't seem to have a target framework. It makes me wonder how it is that we're picking up the target framework. Well, I guess the first thing to do is to say what would happen if we just 
updated everything to this. Um, so let's just take one of these projects. I think um, I can get away with this. So. <clears throat> So the idea will be then that we're just going to take um, what appears to be the new style. Let's double check a couple of these projects. Yeah, they're all very, very simple. Now, we don't really want Netcore app uh, tree one. Uh, so let's just say Netcore app six or something like that. OK, so six appears to be, uh, is it six or zero? Ah, OK. <clears throat> Let's just double check what we should say. Not zero. Well, let's just try six and see what that does. We don't really care about uh, historical versions and stuff. We are just going to support latest because uh, for our purposes, we don't really care about the history. If anyone comes that wants to um, use an older version, then uh, there'll be a different requirement. Interesting enough, it seems to be very slow today. I did a restart recently, so I um, <clears throat> wasn't expecting it to be very slow. Anyway, let's just uh, go back to where we were. Right, so assuming this vaguely makes sense, I mean, of course, you understand I'll have to make a change to the template. See, the saving seems to be taking forever. I wonder if this is related to the C sharp, uh, sorry, to the XML mode. I always find that Emacs uh, not to be fast at XML. So uh, let's just change this to Fermanental and then let's save it. No, still quite slow. Very strange. This, uh, this is a great example of uh, why coding is such a complicated thing. Um, you spend a lot of time faffing with things that are not particularly important. Um, like, I don't really understand why my Emacs... I mean, of course, if you keep on updating packages to latest, there's always a possibility that you end up breaking something, I guess. But um, Emacs was behaving quite fine for a while, and now... Um, seem to be struggling a little bit and we never have the time to be investigating all these things so uh, right again we're, just, we're not actually using a lot of logic here we're just gonna go and just try this and see what happens um, it's good that the project files are much simpler this should make our life easier as well <clears throat> and once we've done that um, we can then uh, look for GitHub Actions for C Sharp. Um, I think there's a setup.net. This seems to be quite straightforward. So hopefully we will. Right, so I just need to locate all of these files. Not entirely sure. Let's have a quick look at this project. Uh, excuse me again. Well, that's setting cold still. So there's the action that we can use. Uh, and actually, I've probably already got the project here. And let's have a quick look. Oh, there's two of these guys. Okay, fine. Not entirely sure um, this is all going to work, but seems a bit too easy. So presumably, um, we have a few of these. Luckily, we don't have too many C sharp projects. And 
and these are just models, so that's fine. Okay, um, well, let's see what this does. Uh, oh, okay. All right, so sadly, of course, uh, we have a lot of errors. Okay, some of these are not too bad. Um, maybe what we really need is to uh, get OmniSharp 2 starts. Okay, cool. Uh, this may ne not necessarily be. Um, maybe these are real errors. Uh, it's possible. So what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at. Um, well, let's just try to see if we can get OmniSharp to start correctly. So uh, LSV workspace restarts. <clears throat> Now, by restarting um, the workspace, hopefully it's going to pick up the new project files, going to give you some errors, and away you go. Okay, cool. Um, that looks good. Now, if we go back to that shell of ours, um, let's pick up one of these errors. So, properties assembly info. So, just take one of these guys, like the tests. Okay, so not entirely sure why uh, C sharp in the shell is complaining about something. Seems to be complaining about this company attribute. It's not obvious to me that it's duplicate. Um, Assembly company attribute. Alright, so this is a bit puzzling. Um, let's just double check that we're getting the same error. Uh, what we'll do is we will. Uh, one thing that's very annoying is we. Uh, our Emacs is a little bit weird at the moment. Um, right, so if I take a look at that error, uh, ah, sort of copy everything except for the error. <clears throat> it's very annoying that this shell um, does not allow me to move using my normal keys. Um, so you can see here that. He might seem to be convinced that um, there's a problem with this file. Whereas OmniShap seems to be very happy with it. Um, <clears throat> Actually, there's the compilation minor modes for shell, I believe. So, uh, compile minor, compilation minor mode. Okay, cool. So that's useful. And then if I just... Uh, of course, not being able to click the move with the keys is a bit annoying, but... Right, so as you can see here, the specified version... Right, so I don't know what we've done here, but let's just put a zero. I don't really care too much about this. So that's fine. Um, what about this guy? Right, so this guy seems as if we've got two of these guys, I think. And we created too many files. So, okay, let's just go back to code. And let's just say a single info. So this guy lives inside objects debug net six okay cool 
This code was generated by a tool. And as you can see here, this generated code, for whatever reason, seems to have a duplication of one of the properties. Actually, it's not even duplicated. So he thinks it's a duplicate. That's, that's really puzzling, isn't it? So this guy thinks it's a duplicate. But um, I don't see any duplicates here. Um, <clears throat> right, so perhaps what we need to do, as we did with, um, as we did with the project file, what we'll do is let's just locate um, a sample. Um, as we said before, C sharp um, example, and if we just locate the sample assembly info file. <clears throat> If there is such a thing, I think they don't even bother to add one. So, a question to be asked is do we even need these guys anymore? Uh, what would happen if we just deleted it? Excuse me. Um, coughing continues. So, um, as you can see, uh, it seems like the examples don't even show this assembly info files anymore. So, part of me says perhaps we should just get rid of them. Uh, the other interesting thing, of course, is that I think we only use these guys for the test. So, this is manual code. So, I'm just going to quite simply get rid of a few things here. I'll do that in all of the non generated guys. Um, that might just be that guy. Okay, uh, back to shell. Right, so if I just go back to a normal shell. It's best to a coin just in case. Um, ah, okay, cool. Uh, so now it's moaning about things like log for net. Okay, cool. That's not too bad. So now I think we just need a way to say, um, please install some dependencies, right? So uh, good question. How do we do that in a new world? So that will be a NuGet file of some kind. Um, so if I just say, um, so .NET install log for net, something like that. This will be really, this will be really simple. I'm sure there'll be like a recipe to install this thing. Not net CLI. Well, here we go. So I think all we need to do is something like this. Um, .NET add package log for net. Just go back here. If I just say .NET add package log for net. Ah, okay, so um has to be the project level. Fine, um, not a problem. Let's go up to the tests and just add this chat. Okay, it's gonna go away. Do that log for net. That sounds good. Let's add n units. I mean, presumably, uh, this is not the uh, the best way of doing these things, but um, we just need something that get us going. So, Oops. right. So, okay, this is already looking good. And then, um, Newton soft JSON presumably. Interestingly enough, um, okay, that seems to also exist. That's nice. So we need to again go up to the project. Right, at some point this is going to build. <laughs> 
dogs morning. This house is not uh, the best house to record stuff in. Um, uh, this is interesting. So um, here we are. Log again. Right, dog should go quiet now. Hopefully, um, I'll be recording. It's difficult to concentrate with so many interruptions. Um, right, so we probably need some kind of different project type for these guys so that they are not executable. So that's fine. Um, and the quality tests to be failing. So let's have a quick look. Uh, uh, presumably, we're missing a reference here. So we need to add a project reference. So This is probably just a .NET add reference. Here you go. So it's very easy. So presumably we just need to go up to the shell and again once more to the tests. And if we just add a reference to, um, I would say probably this. Now I wonder if. Um, I don't know how the syntax uh, oh okay so it's just a path to the project so so if we just add uh, something like dot dot slash um things like this okay um, <clears throat> right, so that's looking much better. And then finally, we just need a way to say, um, so .NET project library assembly. Just need a way to say that we have an assembly instead of Instead, over by oh, in fact, I bet you that if we were to go back to our lovely project files, we will see uh, that the project file contains something very obvious uh, referring to area. Oh, so, the output type. So, all we need to do is to say output type CS Proj, and this will be something like assembly or something like that. Uh, library, okay. So I think we just need to go through all of these chaps. Ones that are not um, like these. And just update them. Now, <clears throat> this will of course break the code generator as you can imagine because we are now saying that we are generating a completely different project type, um, project file. So the next change we'll have to do once we got this thing working is to uh, update OGEN to generate these files. Hopefully that'll be easy as well. And those are the models. So just see if we can get this guy to compile. <coughs> Okay, um, even the tests appear to require a library. Not quite sure why, we thought it would be an EXE, but uh, not asked too many questions. Ah, interesting. I thought we had an update to the tests file. Seems like we did not. Oh, yeah, sorry, this is because, sorry, this is correct. We, uh, we added the references, so uh, that's why I was not recognizing this file. Right, so that gives us 
Okay. Am I going crazy here? Um, I was convinced that I... Ah, I didn't save. <clears throat> Seems like I didn't save, so hopefully that will be it. Um, extraordinarily slow saving for some reason. A file with five lines. Ten maybe. Yeah, recording. Yeah, recording. Half an hour. Uh, this is rather painful. It seems like it's only the CS Brush files for some reason, but um, I could uh, do some profiling in Emacs, but um, we're trying not to get too sidetracked with other stuff and just getting on with work. So, be good if we could just get over the hump. It's ridiculously long. Okay, so that being the case, uh, let's try again to build. Right, so that works. And can we run any tests? Not really. Okay, so uh, now we have another problem, which is .NET test does not seem to work. So let's try to understand why. Um, Presumably is because this is not, oh, looks like there's something happening here. One sec. Uh, as I was saying, it seems that like .NET test is not finding out any any tests, which is probably fine. Um, presumably .NET test does not use any unit, so that's probably all right. So let's have a look at what it should be using. Um, right, X unit, presumably. So let's just... Um, Luckily, this never this is generated code, so I think we can get away with this. Um, so instead of log for net, uh, no, log for net is fine, I think. Uh, instead of let's use X unit, and then instead of text feature, we use this fact. I'm not necessarily sure if we need to really do this, but. Uh, Actually, before we do anything else, uh, .NET test and unit, just in case this is a retrieval thing to do, to go back one. Because if it's really easy, <clears throat> coffee is really killing me. If it's really easy, um, so let's just double check. This is definitely n unit. Okay, it's definitely in unit, so um, yep, yeah, that looks fine. Um, I'm not quite sure why .NET test is not picking this up. Um, Presumably, it's because um, there's some linkage required somewhere. Ah, here we are. What's this? The N unit 3 test adapter. Hmm. Not sure what this is, but uh, that's just for a laugh. I don't know why we have it here. It should be. Just for a laugh, let's just go to the show and um, um, so if I just do but let install I'm not sure why I'm in NPM. I'm assuming this is not being installed. Um, what did we do a second ago? We installed things. Pretty sure we got that install. I got that add. Okay, let's try got that add. Right, and then got that test. Hmm. Not 
quite sure why it's not finding the tests. Um, <clears throat> Let's have a quick look at the sample generated code. So clearly there must be something very obvious in there. Right, so if we just go back to our test file. Let's just go to codes. So I think something is not right. Let's do a quick comparison between these two things. So target framework, okay, we have target framework. They don't seem to bother with output type, so let's do the same. Um, includes n units in the adapter uh, plus it tests SDK. So let's just um, add the reference to that too. <clears throat> Again, we have to wait for a while, but I think the main difference I can see here is just this test SDK. Something must be responsible for hooking in and unit with the framework, and that's all we're missing at the moment. Once that's done, and um, hopefully the test will be picked up. And whilst that's saving, we can have a quick look at these actions. I think. <coughs> this is probably enough, I think. Right, so that guy seems to have done the job. Have a look. Oh. <coughs> Apologies. Didn't get in time to the. Oh no, it's not. Um, didn't get in time to switching off the recording. So we have to bear with my sneezing. Right, so where are we then? Um, All a bit cumbersome at present. Yeah, hey, okay, I know this is building. No, it's running tests. And zero failed, 12 passed. Okay, cool. Excellent. So um, that is pretty good. So I think we just have to have a look at what we changed. So I think anything under tests is fine. Anything not under tests will require a code generated change. And I think everything that's not done the test is just the CS project. So we'll restore all these changes and say um, uh, update uh, migrate to net, net 6.0. Okay, cool. So that's fine. And then for good measure, let's uh, add an action. Which is this one that will very simply right, around here somewhere create an interactive called GitHub that would do, and then in here for workflows, and then we can just say. I'm just going to call it actions, but yeah, more I think might not be the best of names. Um, right, so all I want is six. And if we just say dot net build, um, presumably that's going to be this guy here. So, um, well, something like cdfsc dot net build dot net test. In fact, I wonder why they uh, don't run dot net test. 
here we are. Uh, here we go for two runs. I don't think you need two runs, but um, right. <clears throat> In fact, I'll leave it like that to see what happens. Uh, dot net build dot net test. And then in terms of the name, um, if we just have a quick look at what is the convention we got for Dogecoin. Right, so we just call it continuous Linux. Uh, interestingly enough, we didn't even mention the operating system here. I wonder what that would mean. Ah, we're missing a lot of things here, I think. <coughs> So, <clears throat> right, so we need something like this. Um, let's call this name Crux Command and Buffer. So continuous Linux. That's YAML, presumably. Something like this. Um, and then um, <clears throat> so we don't really need all this stuff. Um, so Linux. Well, we don't really have all these things, so uh, perhaps if we can say matrix family. Then uh, Linux. Presumably we need a checkout. So once we start the steps, um, don't really need that. So let's just do checkouts. Right, there's already a checkout here. The SFD three sounds better than ours. So, and then uh, the next step will be this guy here. And then the next step after that is the run. Well, that sounds sensible enough. Now let's just double check what we got here. Continuous Linux. Uh, this is just the usual. Then build matrix family. Family will be uh, Linux. Runs on latest. Strategy fail fast false. Not that that matters, but includes. Okay. I wonder actually if. Um, well, anyway, let's just see what this does, to be honest. Uh, not exactly the master of GitHub actions, so... Uh, well, let's just try that and see what that would do. So, uh, with a bit of luck, Right, so I think, I don't think our actions are being picked up. Well, they are being picked up, but... Uh, right, so I think we can ignore these two pull requests. Because we've already bumped the versions. As you can see, we already bumped the version, so this is not going to be a problem, right? So, um, <clears throat> however, our actions are not very happy at present, so. Okay, so we made a mistake somewhere.
bit difficult with all this coughing to try to uh, concentrate. So uh, yeah, we made a mistake somewhere in our workflow. Uh, so no steps defined in steps. Well, clearly there are some steps defined in steps. Uh, and no workflow called in uses for the following jobs builds. I think all that's happened there was um, we did not respect the syntax. Uh, so I'm just going to go across workspaces here and grab this guy. Now we can do a quick diff here. So up to build looks fine. Ah, steps is not at the same level as build. You can see here. So builds contains name and then this should fall under strategy, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. And then in here we then have all the steps. Okay. So now then, if I just then say, um, Apples in workflow. I probably should say fix indentation, but you get what I mean. And if we then say what is happening in our actions, very quick to reply to be fair. Okay, so something is not quite right with our matrix still. Um, we probably don't really need all this stuff really, but uh, so matrix. Ah, in fact, to be honest, we don't really need a matrix because there's only one build, right? So let's just say, let's just try to get rid of as many of these things as possible because I think, uh, although having said that, we do seem to have lost Ubuntu here somewhere. Hmm, okay. But what I find interesting is that these examples. Uh, For the GitHub Actions, right? There is an example here in the samples of the GitHub Actions. So, build validation. What's this? Jobs. Okay, runs on. <clears throat> okay, so I think what we're going to do is ah, but we do need the matrix because we would like to run this on Windows and Linux. Um, this is only running on Windows, so... Okay, so this is a useful um, place to copy stuff from, but we can't copy exactly as is. So, but right, let's just try to then make a mix between what we've done before. So we have a compiler and a build type. So all we need is a family, I think. Then runs on, whatever the OS latest. And then fail fast. Matrix. And then in the matrix we need... Well, actually... Um, Ah, uh, yes, now I understand, because we've got one for Linux and one for Windows, so that won't be a matrix, right? So, okay, so, um, it's beginning to make sense now, so, what we'll do is, I'm going to make a mix and match of the different things here. Right, so we'll do something like this then, continuous Linux, fine. Um, the name it 
So go into jobs and then in jobs we have a step called build, whatever that is, and then let's go straight into steps. So um they don't seem to use the name interestingly enough. So we'll copy it. Runs on well, I think we just call this Lotus. Ah, but then how do we know what Linux latest is? Uh, so it's probably Ubuntu, really. Strategy. Well, they don't bother with that, so we won't bother with that either. And then we will... We will just basically run .NET info. Seems a useful thing to do. Uh, but of course we probably should set it up first right so um just so we know what we're running this is always a problem when things go wrong <clears throat> my emacs is very very strange at present right so on ubuntu latest run and do all these things so that sounds about right so now let's go back to git i have to cough again very annoying. Uh, probably not the best time to do any recording. Right, so, um, no fixes to actions. Not that actually this is going to solve all our problems, but let's have a look. Um, oh, improved. It is already doing something. Right, so I think this will, might actually do something vaguely sensible, so uh, we'll leave that to it. And whilst that's doing its thing, we will um, make a copy of that workflow. We shall call it um, Windows, perhaps. So that will be the Windows version. And for a laugh, we will reference uh, whatever that OS is. In fact, I'll just say Windows latest because I don't really care. It's not there's something recent. Um, so that should um, help me out with Windows. And then, uh, while we're there, we just need a way to say, um, if you please, <clears throat> give me an moment for the workflow. Uh, oh, we got a great build already. Interesting. Ah, okay. Um, this is because you're not supposed to do a run like that. You're supposed to do a run with a pipe somewhere. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, while we're there, if we could just copy I think we can literally just copy these two guys here. I might have to uh, end very quickly this video because uh, you'd be struggling a bit with the cough. Um, so I'll just remove these things here. And then if we just update Dogen. Whatever the project name is, right? So, um, quick jump over to Git and 
run error and add window action. Uh, readme wants to um, move action. Let's build endings to its um, action. Alright, once again, we shall try to build. <clears throat> Uh, MTC. Wait, so let me know what happened there with the copy and paste. Let's have a look. We copied. Hmm, not always, why well, this failed. <clears throat> Clearly missing something on the YAML. Um, the markdown, sorry. Um, let's try to make this a long line. Oh, okay. Um, we don't really want line breaks here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what we wait for these. Right, so I think we can get rid of could that oh wow okay we're passing now so let's just get rid of the uh, number of emblems we got there in there. Uh, read me so don't seem to be using code quality codacity and Code call. We could probably uh, think about reinstating these later, but not now. So if I just say remove, remove and use emblems, just to make things a little bit tidier. Right, so I like these depending upon the alerts. Not very sure why we're still getting this alert since we were updated. <coughs> well, um, let's just say that um, we've already started a fix of this. Because uh, we have, uh, I think, fixed it with the updates. Um, so it looks like um, we're building. Um, so now, of course, we will have a break if I attempt to run tests, I guess. So if I just go to Dota and up to this guy here. And if I try to run the tests, uh, I think it's still impossible. All right, we've had about 20,000 interruptions in this video, but um, I think uh, we kind of got the most of the work done, even though it was not exactly the best of videos. But as you can see here, we are now compiling C Sharp, um, both on Linux and Windows. Um, excuse me, I'm not going to bother to uh, support um, OS X because, uh, well, 
be fair. I mean, how hard would it be? We are building one sex for the other product, so maybe we should actually. Um, this is very trivial. We will just add a new GitHub. Actually, this is the good thing about this actions uh, business. I can simply just go up to um, my OSX action. And I know it's Mac OS or the name of the operating system, so I can just go up to uh, codes uh, and look for my GitHub folder. Make a copy. I want you guys to. Uh, and then just replace. Uh, Windows with Mac OS. I think that's it. <clears throat> and if that's supported by that action, in theory, that's all I need to do. And then uh, finally, in uh, I think the emblem, I think, should be also quite straightforward. Uh, I think all we need to do is. So for the noise, not exactly the best of days to record today. Um, hopefully it should be quiet now. Um, so if we resume, uh, we added the OSX. So if I just take it to add um, build for Mac OS. Bit of luck. Not sure if this is going to work or not, but it's worthwhile giving it a go. And might as well push to all of our remotes to keep them all up to date. Um, and so, um, right, so that's that. And now, if we then go back to uh, the build failures, as you can see here, quite a lot of errors going through. Um, that is expected. So, all we need to do now is to uh, update the code generator to match the templates so if i choose any of these project files perhaps uh, so let's check with the recording uh, so the hopefully uh it'll be slightly less noisy now um where are we okay so uh as i said we are generating the old project files as expected so all we now need to do is to say um where are these project files being generated presumably this is going to be oh yeah so if we just uh we're in compilation so i can't the discipline here with our areas so um if i just go up to the models one of these guys will be texts okay and then in here what we need to do is um we just need to find the project file. So perhaps, um, oh, someone else is going on. Bit challenging uh, working with family and coding. So what we need to do then is we need to look for, um, I don't know, something like, something that would exist in our project file, such as, um, in fact, I think it's Visual Studio. So we have Visual Studio Solution and Project. Presumably Project. Yes, here we are. So, um, I think we might be able to get away with simply replacing all of this. With this. Um suspect this might give us an error. But worth trying. So uh, what would happen if we do that? So because this is a template, we probably need to regenerate the code generator. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, let's just do a generate all org first. Um, okay, we broke the templates. Um, I think it's one too many. Okay, that's some of words. And then 
let's try running tests. Uh, so, well, ooh. right, okay, cool, that's fine, that is fine. Uh, all we've done is we, um, we weren't careful enough with our changes, so um, I suspect we need something such as, well, let's just go back one. We just were a little bit careless with our updates, so let's just go back to the way it was, and then in here, that should probably help. And then it was moaning about prod, so prod is probably no longer needed, perhaps. Let's see if it compiles. So what we're trying to do now is to try to match the generator code, uh, well, the code that we manually crafted a second ago, um, which is just a project file, so it's not huge amounts, but uh, hopefully, of course, as you can imagine, this is just a bit of a hack because, I mean, I'll just use Dyer here as an example because uh, I'm not quite sure where Dyer is gone. Uh, there's a lot of things, oh, there you go. So if I just use this as an example, because our plant UML is not quite up to speed, so <clears throat> if I go up to the logical model, um, and uh, I don't really like these rulers, so I'll get rid of them. Uh, and if I look here for Visual Studio, I'm probably going to find the project file here. It contains a lot of stuff. <clears throat> So we, we don't need any of this stuff anymore, I don't think. Um, we just need to start projects. Um, so I think we probably just need to get rid of this now. Uh, hopefully. Right, there we are. So still not quite there yet. Um, not obvious why. <coughs> Uh, interestingly enough, we seem to have updated the VCX project. So the problem will be now that we... Uh, okay, this is going to be slightly more complicated than expected. Because we had both Visual Studio projects for C++ and Visual Studio projects for C Sharp. Um, I think... We may have used the same for both. Okay, right. So we're not going to really have the time to finish this in this video because we really are an hour and a bit into it. So, okay. So the problem we now have is um, the next task is we need to figure out. We need to unpick C plus plus and C sharp. I mean, to be fair, it is as if we are failing. Well, these are C plus plus projects, so that's fine. That is, however, a C sharp project. So this guy here. Have, okay, so I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if this is something simple. Perhaps we just updated the wrong guy. Um, let me just go back. Let's go back to the way things were. Let's just double check that there isn't. Um, <clears throat> so, as far as I can see, there's only project. And I think project applies to both. Hmm, that would make a lot of sense because I don't think there is. Um, yeah, the, the project of C sharp surely would not be the same as the project of C. So I think we should have some kind of way of differentiating the two. Um, unless, of course, we are generating invalid. Yes, that's probably what's happening, isn't it? Right, so. Uh, let's just make this back to normal. So I suspect what's happening right now is if I were to go to the backlog and look for VCX Rog. Yeah, here we go. So So there are some issues with VCX files, but I probably slightly more fundamental than that. But according to our backlog, there's only one story on this subject and 
it's a very minor problem. So it seems to appear from first glance that uh, VCX projects are being generated correctly. That's a bit surprising. Um, I didn't think they were, to be honest. Um, that's very strange. I didn't think this was the case. Uh, so at any rate, let's uh, copy this to the current string. Because even we're going to have to change these guys. And we'll have a look at that. Uh, and there's no other dimension of VCX. In, no, there isn't. Okay, very surprising. Um, it's still not obvious to me how it is that we're generating um, a valid VCX project rather than a VC project. And the CS project, should I say. Because <clears throat> I thought there was quite a lot of differences between the CS project and the VCX project. Um, let's have a quick look at um, C++. <clears throat> so if we take one of these guys and look at source perhaps. Yeah, as you can see here, we're not actually generating any VCX projects, I don't think. So where did we get these errors from? Well, I'm just going to take this the way it was. Hope the cough will go away. Yeah, as you can see here, we quite clearly, yes, this is quite clearly a C++ project because um, it's importing the CPP targets. Um, I think, right, I know what's going on now. Um, we're in the wrong technical space. So this is one of the problems with this flat structure. Uh, it's not obvious that there are multiple technical spaces um, so as you can see here, we're in the C++ technical space, where we're really meant to do is we're in the C sharp technical space. So that's not ideal. And now we have a projection over that technical space for C++ and C sharp, should I say. And here is where we're meant to alter. So if I now come here and update this guy. So of course we haven't touched this code in many, many years. So that's why we can't remember half of these things. Um, and then in here, if I just basically say, please get rid of all this. And I think we will have the same problem with this guy as we had before. Okay, cool. Now, if I just generate everything. Right, so to um, clarify what happened there, uh, we are possibly supporting um, both VCX projects and CS projects. Um, I don't think we actually are uh, testing for that. Um, maybe there are some tests somewhere with the VCX project, but I can't see them here in the C++ reference implementation. So I, I think whilst we have that support, I don't think we're actually using it in Angle. Anyway, so um, a single uh, logical model element is projected across the physical space to different technical spaces. Um, and each of those projections has got a corresponding template. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, we have the, if you could see the full path here in org mode, you'd see that we are inside of, uh, if I just say control C up, right. So we transforms C sharp, which is the technical space. And then inside of C sharp, we are in Visual Studio. And inside of Visual Studio, we're in um, the project. And that is a projection for C, C sharp. Uh, so what we did a second ago is we were in the wrong technical space and we updated the projection. That's why the brakes were all over the place. Right, so now then, if I go up to um, Git, I should see a couple of changes to this template. So we've updated the model, as you'd expect, and we regenerated the code and nothing else broke. So if I just say text update C sharp, um, well, CS proj template for a dot net six. And that's that. And then, of course, if I then close this 
story because we now have support for C sharp. Now I am not going to tackle the VCX issue, so we will just reverse that change. Whatever it was before. And if I go up to Git, I should see very little change. So um, let's just. So although this is not exactly the most uh, best of videos, we did manage to achieve what we were looking for, which is um, hopefully when I push this, uh, CI will be uh, working correctly. And let's just close a few of these stories because. Um, the changes to test structure resolve this issue. So we just close all the stories related to CI because we're now happy with CI finally. <coughs> uh, yeah, I think this is good. Okay, so if I just uh, close these guys, go up to Git and say something like uh, Agile backlog requirement. Alright, so apologies, this video is a bit longer than expected, but uh, hopefully it was worthwhile continuing to the end because um, we were able to resolve all the issues. So um, what did we achieve then today? Uh, we updated the C Sharp ref impl. As you can see here, we now have three workflows in this. Uh, all the three workflows are green, which is good. Uh, I think we don't really particularly care about the, um, the output of the workflow, so we don't really have any artifacts, so that's fine. But uh, the, the good thing is that the test, uh, in fact, let's just double check that the tests are passing. This could be uh, one of those classic assumptions. Um, okay, so we probably don't want to call that run probably call this something else but uh, as you can see here this thing is doing some building then running tests okay across three operating systems so now c-sharp project is i mean it's still very deficient on c-sharp support but uh um, it kind of works vaguely um, and the ci is now back up to uh, to what it was before so if you make a change to c-sharp now it will compile and run tests which is what we wanted um we also completed all the stuff in C++ ref impl and we completed all the stuff in Dogen. So with a bit of luck, uh, when this build start coming through, we should um, now have zero defects in CI, which hopefully will happen tomorrow once the night is kicking. Uh, and that's the end of that. So um, none of these stories ended up being... Uh, have I pushed everything? Yeah, we pushed everything. Uh, none of these stories ended up being uh, yet related to um, the PMM refactor. We're still closing um, the CI uh, issues, but uh, now I think we're now finally finished with that. So the next video will actually be real work. Um, that's about it. Thanks for watching.